Hmm. But how come, like why does African owned churches in the diaspora, in the abroad, why is it difficult for foreigners like the Caucasians, the uh, African Americans, or any other tribe, you know, any other foreigner, why is it difficult for them to attend uh, Nigerian or other African based churches that are in the diaspora? And even if they come, even if one or two come to the church, they never come back. Why though? Hi everyone, welcome to In His Love. My name is Pedita. How are you doing? Good. Thank you for stopping by. Uh, thank you for clicking on this video. And um, if you haven't liked, please go ahead and like the video. Uh, give us a thumbs up so that way YouTube can push out uh, this video and uh, um, it can go it can go across to so many people so they can get the message. And um, if you haven't uh, subscribed to this channel, what are you waiting for? Go ahead and subscribe. Give us a gift of your subscription. And um, let's jump into today's video. So today um, we're going to be talking about how come, like why is it difficult for uh, Nigerian-based churches or African-based churches, you know, that have branches here in the, in the diaspora, how come it's only fellow Nigerians that you see there? You know, and one big reason, I mean, the major reason, the major reason is the gospel. The gospel that Africans are preaching. That gospel, that prosperity gospel, that um, uh, uh, give me, give me, give me kind of gospel, that blessing, 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 breakthrough gospel does not fly with foreigners. It, it does not fly with them. So, like for me, <laughs> from my own experience, you know, when I was going to these churches, uh, African-based churches, and many of us here that are, are popular to this channel, you know that I came out from Winner's Chapel. That was my last church that I went. I went to other churches, but, you know, I well, I live in the diaspora, and... Um, I've had the privilege to go to all of the churches, the Caucasian, all Caucasian churches, uh, all um, African-American, name it, I've been to all. But for somehow, some some way, I found myself remaining in Winner's Chapel. But anyway, so when I was there, though, in the choir and everything, and um, they would tell us in the choir, you know, and that's the reason some of this... Um, um, or you both people are not staying is because of the songs we are singing. We should be singing, looking for foreign songs. We should be singing, you know, like singing um, foreign songs alone. You know, we shouldn't be singing like you know our native songs. You know those praise worship songs that we, that we sing a lot in Nigerian churches. You know that we that we enjoy, and we shouldn't be singing that. That's why they are not staying. And I'm like, hey, but is that the reason why they are not staying? But not until, <laughs> not until my eyes got open to the truth of the gospel did I realize that. So that's not the reason that they were not staying. It wasn't the songs we were singing because foreign musicians as singers are singing these are native songs. So it can't be the songs, you know. So it is the gospel, the kind of gospel we preach. All that prosperity gospel, uh, breakthrough gospel. A breakthrough kind of God, what you can get, what he can give you, your breakthrough, your miracle job, the, all that nonsense that they preach that is not the gospel, is not does not fly with foreigners. It doesn't fly. But anyway, I'm going to play this video for, for you, for all of us, so, so you guys can see and watch Pastor Sunday answer this same question very well, like... You, 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 you will enjoy it. Just sit back and, and watch him answer this question very well. Like, how come, you know, how come all these African churches, Nigerian churches in the diaspora, why is it only Nigerians that attend their churches? Why? The gospel that they are teaching is wrong. And then another greatest thing is the, there's no love in our African churches. We, we don't know how to show love to the world and foreigners 
do not appreciate that especially when you call yourself a church <laughs> so anyway watch the video and uh, like the video share the video share 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 and i'll see you on my next video remain blessed and stay in his love so first of all as i just wanted to ask you this question you know in 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 europe churches are empty are supposedly empty in western east you know but um how what is the thing what is the message that you are sharing that is because you are not doing you're not you are not you are not doing the revival crusade you're not doing healing crusade you are not saying if you've sold 10 naira you will get 20 naira you are not you know none of those tactics that we have seen in nigerian pentecostal ministry i went and spent some time just trying to find something Sha. You know, they were not doing any of it. We are not saying once you come, as I lay hands on you. None of those things. But yeah, there's people in a society that is, that is, that is compete, that is largely functional. You know, that where citizens have often held their governments accountable, they keep coming into that church. Now, when you talk to pastors in Nigeria here, they say, eh, "Where some of my friends who are pastors?" They say, eh, "You know, just some of these things. It's not as if they are really." Well, let me not let me not misquote. So they say some of these things are necessary to bring people into the church. Now you, in a society where people are not even going to church, don't do those things, but manage to get people into the church. What are you doing differently that's leading people into the church without any of these gimmicks? I can see why you are a famous journalist. You are very smart. You are very smart. You are very smart. Well, number one, in Europe, you cannot be effective if you just depend on the speculatives and the sensationalism you know in america you could still be because you have a mixture of black people there something like that so what has killed nigerian church is the departure from the gospel into preaching what is called health and wealth gospel or prosperity gospel or word of faith gospel word of faith movement is what has killed nigerian christianity that word of faith movement that came from America, Kenneth Hagin. Now, Kenneth Hagin was good to, to some extent, but he, what, they didn't understand him. What he did was that he was preaching what God gave him faith. But our people went and ad, ad, adopt, uh, adopted it as the whole gospel. No, that's just one little topic in the entire gospel. But we had the gospel before they came. But once they came, our people just abandoned everything they had before. They wanted a quick result and quick fix. So what am I preaching? So if you, you follow, look through Europe. You will not see one church that is preaching those things, that is word of faith based, health and wealth, that is successful. Right. If you are going to be promising people health, 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 I mean, they will think you are a scammer. Already you already have it and they have medical services. And if you are going to call it them work, work, they will just think you are foolish. How will I not do? What did I do to... to to earn that what did i do to, to qualify i mean what is it it's not logical for them so europeans have yeah people the europeans have learned to think they are very think they are very critical people so when you listen to my teaching and my presentations i'm always making point logical points i'm always proving and argumenting you know but before this i had to learn the hard way when i came first because i was in nigeria for six months before i got saved there and by, by the time I came, I was preaching like in Nigeria. For four years, I couldn't get one, one, one black person, I mean, one white person saved. For four, four years, I could only get black people saved. Then I discovered that here, they don't want your sensationalism and emotion. They want your logics. They want your arguments. It has to be backed. You know, they are used to research. They are used, they have been taught from their primary school, secondary school, what is called critical thinking and analytical thinking. They have to question everything. So if there is one little question that you cannot answer, you know, forget about it. And also, don't come to them with some, you know, miraculous claims that they cannot see the clarify, clarify it because they know and they have been taught that life is based on cause and effect. So if there is no cause and you are promising them effect, yeah, effect. yeah, it's just like Chris or Yakilome coming on TV and telling people, you know, you have miracle money without doing anything. Ah, uh -uh. and Nigerians are believing, and then this he is the one that is telling people they will have miracle money. He's still asking for offering. So why don't you do miracle? <laughs> why don't you do miracle money for yourself? 
or oh, you did oh, you did book oh, you did book teaching that uh he's been blessed he's been anointed or something or called to bring to make people rich so why are you collecting offering now make you just make them rich now so why do you need my money again nah, are you greedy are you are you evil if you already been blessed to make us rich why is that is, that, is it that, that connect every sunday in a collection with the sea we are not seeing any distribution anywhere so how will we be rich without distribution some so those things will only sell in places where people don't think and where people have been taught to just obey authority where truth has not been emphasized where there is no authority of the truth and when there is no authority of the truth everything becomes authority everything becomes their authority and every authority becomes their truth so because of that uh, our that's why it's selling over there but here in europe <laughs> you you have to do your research very well you have to show you know you have to show that you are qualified for them to even listen to you in the first place mm -hmm. now you might see one or two white people there sometimes but that may be because they are desperate or they are poor or they because they need some some, some intervention or something but those are just exemptions but you will not have white uh, yeah large scale uh, effectiveness so what do i preach number one when i started our church I, I went and fasted for six months, eating only once a day. And I was thinking, when I come, when I when this when I come like this, I will become a miracle worker. But when the when the pews are empty and the, the nobody is there, what who will you do miracle to? Maybe make you convert the pews and the shares to human beings that miracle now. It was it was, <laughs> it was a failed effort. Then I was I was so angry and I was like, God, I ah. This is the formula I had now that if you pray and fast, six months, no food, only once a day. And now, no, ah, people do, are not even here. No talk less of doing miracle for them. And even the ones who get miracle, they don't come back the next day. So I was so frustrated. I said, God, what is my problem? What did I get wrong? Then after, one day I said, I will not sleep today until you speak to me. So God spoke to me. <laughs> and showed me that there was a, there is a scripture in mark where it says and the poor people felt welcomed by him i said i never saw this one before jesus created an environment where the most desperate destitute poor rejected downcast outcast felt welcomed by him then he told me go and remove that your tie and your, sh your jacket he said because that is not meaning suit eloquence pulpit is not ministry preaching is not ministry bible carrying is not ministry you know miracle doing is not ministry at all ah then you have just stripped me naked god <laughs> so what then is ministry <laughs> well, we are, i'm left with nothing what then is ministry yes i had clearly ministry is your ability to make every person experience or feel the love of God. Go and go and touch people with God's touch of love. Go and just let them feel God's touch of love. That's your only, that's your only mission. Let people feel God's touch of love. Now, for that, for them to feel that touch of love, if necessary, to preach to them. If that teaching and that preaching would make them to feel that love. So those people who say I don't have love, they don't know that the biggest expression of love that I could give to the Nigerian church and geos is to tell them the truth. Because I'm sure that even some of the things I've been preaching, eh, all those people didn't even know. Maybe they, didn't, they were not aware that they were wrong. And yes, yes, that is the biggest expression of love. And so, but make them, if, if, if you need to hug people, to feel not your own touch of love, but God's touch of love, What's do and do it. If you need to uh, heal people for them to feel God's touch of love, go and do it. If you need to preach the gospel to make them feel anything, if you need to stand on your knees, no preach, no preaching, anything, just to make them feel the touch of God's love, 
That's what you should do. So your whole life should be focused not on what, what suit you wear, not on the pulpit, not how many people you have. Just everybody must, by the time they encounter you, they must, that touch of God's love must be left with them. So he showed to me that, you know, in Matthew 25, that's why Jesus said, I was hungry. I was naked. I was in prison. It's all about God's touch of love. When the, when the, when the, when the lawyer came to, yeah, when the lawyer came to Jesus and said, how can I inherit the kingdom of God? In Luke chapter 10, he told him, uh, go and you know, love your neighbor as yourself. That one said, ah, my neighbor, who is my neighbor? He said, okay, I will tell you a story. He told the story of the good Samaritan. He said, you want to inherit eternal life? Go and do this and you shall live eternally. So, it's not we in Nigeria, the gospel we preach in Nigeria is this. Receive the Lord Jesus Christ in your heart. How, what does that mean to our people? Is confess, you know, just repeat after me. He said, Jesus Christ, yes. receive you as a... Jesus said, no. For you to live eternally, go and live by love. Go and do this, and you shall live. Because the question was specific. What would I do to inherit the kingdom of God? He said, go and do this, and you shall live. Then, in Matthew chapter 25, where it says... I was naked, I was hungry, I was this. He said the ones who didn't feed him, who didn't clothe him, who didn't visit him, he said he sent them to hell, to darkness, where there is gnashing of teeth. Even though, in the case of Good Samaritan, the priest was there. So that's to say a pastor, and he will not live eternally. The Levite was there, passed by. He will not live eternally. So these are people who are born again. Levite is their praise and worship leader today. So these are people who are born again. The, 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 the uh, priest is the one like a geo today. They will not live eternally. Why? But the one that didn't do pray, prayer or confession and you know, ministry in church, this in church, is the one who will live eternally. People say, I've received Jesus Christ as my Lord and Savior. I want to see it. I don't want to know what you repeated. I want to see the manifestation of it. I want to see Christ in you. I want to see, if you have not imbibed, I don't believe people are born again if you cannot reveal Christ. I mean, there's no way you are born again where I'm not seeing him. I want to see him. Christ must become flesh in you for you to say you are born again. So that's number one. So after the Lord showed that to me, I removed my suit. I, there was a lady that had come to me before then and said, her name was Natasha. I said, Natasha what? She said, Natasha Alcoholic. I said, how could you be Natasha Alcoholic? Is that your last name? I never had such a last name before. She said, no, my last name is not that. It's just that is who I am. Ah. After that, when God told me that, I went to look for her very fast. Because when she told me she's Natasha Alcoholic, I was crying that God. I said, I fasted for this 90, 46 months. And I was thinking you are going to bring normal people to church. The one that came, she said she's an alcoholic. I thought that was even her last name. So I was saying, God, what a disappointment. But now I discover she's not a disappointment. Though. So God wanted this woman to feel God's touch of love through me. Ah! And I was expecting engineers, students, teachers, doctors, and things. So I quickly ran to her. I started loving her. And she didn't know what happened to me. I said, please, I have one request to you. What request? Do you know where all the alcoholics are and uh, drug addicts? She said yes. I said please. So I, I left my hall that I rented. I started going to touch people, to wash, yeah, to wash people's wounds, to cut their hair, to care for them and make anything they needed to feel God's touch of love. We started caring for them. We started bringing them in. We started cleaning them. And in one year after doing that. All their relatives who have given up on them started discovering that their children are okay. They started seeing them clean, you know, drugs, no alcoholism. It is that love. They, you just, I just, once I show that love, I don't even need to pray for deliverance. I just say in Jesus' name, the deliver, people just get set free. The, the spirit of alcoholism just leaves. Dreams of drug addiction. In up to today, that is the tradition. We don't pray twice for anybody. Once we discover that touch of love and we're able to manifest it, mm. 
deliverance just comes. Well, we've up to now we've had over forty thousand people delivered like that from drug and alcoholic addiction. So I discovered that God, the lesson God was teaching me is that if you could touch me with love, to, to carry His love, if you could trust me with that, He will be able to trust me with any other of His of His of His resources. So number one basis of our ministry is that love. Number two basis of the ministry is justice. 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 You see, when Jesus was speaking in um, yeah, Matthew 23, he said, you people, you, you, you stop giving help to your mother and father because you say you are giving to the church arms, you know, tight and offering. He said, yes, you can give tight. I mean, he, said, he didn't even say, yes, you can give tight and offering. He said, but you have forgotten the weightier matters. Mm, mm, he mentioned mm. three things in the weightier matters. Things before God. This is Jesus talking, you know, the author and finisher of our faith. He mentioned three things that are the weightier matters in the eyes of God Almighty. Yes. And his own eye. He said love, which is, he said loving kindness, which is really love. He said justice. He said truth. Hmm. There is nothing that is more important than those three things. If you go to any church where those three things are not being emphasized, you are not in a church, you are in a cult or in a club or in a cultural association. That is what the whole gospel is all about. That's what God is all about. And that's what Christ is all about. The whole idea of Christianity is all about three things. Love, justice, and truth. Justice and truth. truth. So the next thing we do, we, are, we emphasize in our church here, and Europeans love this, is to fight for cause, for just causes. So, for example, if you see people who are... Yes. So, why did I come out, for example, to confront the Nigerian churches? It's because of justice. So, I would rather choose justice and truth than to be to keep my friendship with the GOs. It's a form of just... You see, in uh, Psalms 82, the Bible says that there was a scenario there where uh, God the Almighty was gathering with his sons. And he was saying, the earth is shaking. The foundation of the earth is shaking. He said, because you people have refused to do justice. Justice, yes. yes. That's why the foundation... So when you see this order in anywhere in the economy, there are people who are children of God that are refusing to bring justice. When you see political uproar, when you see social upheaval, it's because the people, the sons of God that he had called... To bring justice to those areas, they have failed him. He said, oh man, he has redeemed you. He has saved you. What does he demand of you now? He said, justice. That's number two thing. So we do a lot of social works because of that. So the work you are doing with anti-rape movement, that is justice. Until somebody confronts it and exposes it, that thing will never stop. That is just that's what God is for. And that's what church is supposed to be about. Church is not supposed to be about money at all. Even the only reason churches should be collecting money should be to do justice. That is why when they collected the money and brought all the money to the feet of the apostles, they distributed to the people who don't have justice from the government, who don't have justice from the social system, who don't have economic justice, who don't have position, who are not known. That's why God always said, the widows, the orphans, the fatherless, the, 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 the strangers, our priority. Why? They are the people who are most deprived. They need justice. If you go and read Psalm 82, it will blow your mind. Then, if even even in James, it's a pure religion. In fact, the whole purpose of religion is to take care of these of these people, the the, the orphans, the fatherless, the the, uh, the 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 widows and things like that. That is pure religion. There is no religion outside of that. If you don't have, if your church is not focused, I'm not saying like. Uh, a name she is doing now and something once in a year or, or your birthday or Christmas to go and buy bottles of rice, I mean bags of rice and 
and yam and be distributed and be doing and call press conference. <laughs> That's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about that is the whole essence of your existence. That is the that whole is centrality it. of the church. 80% of what is coming to you should be used to bring justice, love, the touch of God's love, and truth to the society. And we emphasize truth. So those are the things that we do. And the Europeans like those things. That's why Amnesty International, they are European things. They are white people. People who come to Africa to come and distribute food, to go and build something, they are white people. That is what their original faith before they all, you know, uh, backslid back That is what the Protestant faith and the Protestant ethic is all about. It's truth, no justice, and the touch of God's love. So love, truth, and justice. These are the things that, that even the Christian, even people who are not born again in Europe, we say they don't go to church. But for me, they are more Christians than, than all the Nigerian. In fact, I did a video uh, last week that I said, on no, last month, that I said, why I respect Bill Gates more than your Jews. I respect G Bill Gates more than all Jews. I respect un un unbeliever uh, Europeans than all Christians in Nigeria. I don't see Christians in Nigeria, but I see Christians in Europe who never go to church. They don't go to church, but I see Christianity in them. I see God in them. I see more God in them. Eh? If you have related with white people, you will see, in fact, <laughs> you will see... You will be seeing Jesus. What you never see among people who go to church in Africa is because the foundations and the fundamentals of the teachings in Africa doesn't have anything to do with Christianity. It has a little bit of syncretism, a mixture of Christianity they say, in the name of Jesus, the Bible, Father in the name of Jesus, God will do this, God, all kind of you know, lingua, Christian lingua, but the essence of it doesn't have anything Christianity. So they mix everything together, but they mix it together with our old traditional African tra traditional beliefs. So it is African culture, traditional belief, everything mixed together in the name of Christianity. It's called syncretism. That's what we are practicing. Or sometimes it is paganism or neo-paganism, but we call them church. Well, Dr. Leraja, we, we, have, we, we are far above time, you know, but I allowed it to happen because I thought this was a very important conversation. And I'm so happy that I did this because up until yesterday, I was still under pressure, you know, because uh, we said, look, if you do an interview with Pastor Dr. Adela, they will say you are fighting the church, or they will not be able to book this person on the show, you will not be able to book this person on the show anymore. And, you know, I'm grateful that I, my team said, you know what, we are going to do it. We are going to do it because now I understand better. When you talk about love, I understand the mission to speak boldly so that from that boldness, Nigerians here can learn boldness and can understand what it should. You know, just listening to you, I'm like, you know, I spent some time reading about the life of the early church. And I'm like, you know, the church wasn't meant to be yet another political institution, you know, exercising power over people. The church was supposed to be the corrective, a space where people who have been excluded could find community, support, and growth, you know. The way you've painted it is so apparent to me why the church was needed in the first place. I thank you so much for joining me today. And now I can boldly say I thank you for the work that you are doing. I thank you so much for joining us. Thank you. And I will be in touch. And I think that we will have many more conversations in the future. My pleasure.